Yeah, I guess we just want to understand a little bit more where these ideas came from. Um, we we're just saying most of these concepts are actually not really talent driven in the sense that you're not surviving on headliners. Is that, is that the case for all of you, Jason? Uh, yeah, uh, we definitely do have headliners for sure. We've booked very big acts, um, but we, are we relying on, the, on that? No, we're definitely not. We have a cruise coming up in October that's 90% sold out, and then we have uh, the group cruise in at the end of January that's already over 50% sold out, and neither one have lineups out. So yeah, they're, they're definitely focused on the brand, but we definitely do book headliners. That's a major part of it. But since we've been doing this for so long, the people trust us, and they know that we're going to come up with a solid the amazing lineup of music for sure. And Swami, if I can call you Swami, so I don't keep calling you both. That's Jason. fine. <laughs> your your event was full of very deep emerging talent in many ways. Tell us a bit about your approach to it. <clears throat> well, we're driven by ethos, um, not by headline talent, and everything's alph uh, alphabetized. Um, we don't put anyone on a particular pedestal. Uh, we, it's about discovery and exploration. And for us, you know, although music is the catalyst to drive people together, we really have a lot of different pillars. Um, you know, there's wellness, there's uh, uh, spa, there's uh, gastronomy, there's uh, CEO talks. Um, so although music's the driver, it's really, um, uh, what, 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 what can I say? It's um, really a gathering of uh, uh, a variety of talented people from different fields. And Sebastian, in, in Life in Color, I mean, all of you, I know from doing events myself, the production costs that all of you are putting in probably is on a par with what you're spending on talent. How does it work in, in your events? Yeah, well, it's, it's a lot more than, than what we spend on talent normally um, because that's, that's kind of like, that, that's the one place I don't mind spending money, you know, because it's like that's where you're delivering an experience for your fans. Um, and, and, yeah, I mean, we try. Obviously, it's going to be within reason because at the end of the day, it's a business. And you, there's got to be a profit, but I mean, yeah, sometimes we, we spend a little more than what we want because we want to deliver that much of an extra experience to, to our fans. And just like Jason said, I mean, you know, we're also able to go on sale just with the brand Life in Color, you know, coming to, you know, Hong Kong or, you know, Brazil. And most tickets normally sell out before, before we announce the lineup. However, I will say that the fans do expect you to give them a good lineup, you know, and, but, but you're right though, like we couldn't, we don't, we're not dependent on them. However, you know, we still like to, you know, work, work with the best one possible and, and just bring the right lineup for the market. Does, does Life in Color only really work with more mainstream electronic music? Have you tried to do it with more underground music ever? Um, well, we would love to. And we're actually looking into that right now. For example, like we're talking about doing the UK um, later in the year or possibly in January. And then we're thinking like, like, we want to bring the, the talent that works for the market, right? But as you can see, Life in Color is a pretty wild, crazy party. So sometimes, like, a, a, a dark, you know, like, type of sound maybe won't work well with the brand. So it's, it's not like we're attached to, like, the, you know, mainstream EDM, but it does have to be high energy. So we're open to doing, like, drum and bass, dubstep, um, hard style. It's just it has to go with, with, with what the party is. Could do it with a lot of black paint for techno, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, Jason, tell us about the evolution of the cruises. I mean, ra rave cruises have been around for a while. As I said, I, I went to a very early one, which honestly was quite an incredible experience. You've really become one of the leading promoters now in this space, and there's been a lot of hype about it. I guess the hard, the success of the hard cruises. Um, tell us about the evolution of this of this business. So it started. I had I come from a very basic uh, upbringing, living in Michigan. My father was a teacher. My mother was a secretary, and I had always I had been on about ten cruises. I was always bored because they're all families and old people, and the music and the nightlife sucks to this day on cruises. But it's the most amazing venue for a party you could ever possibly imagine. You've got everything there. You've got great food, 12 restaurants, spa. Uh, all that stuff is all there for the infrastructure. Each day you wake up, you're in a new island. And, um, but so I had this dream. I remember I was on a cruise ship looking over the pool deck with my brother, and I was like, what would it be like if we had great music, DJs, and all of our friends on this thing? So I put together a business plan to charter a ship in five years. It took me seven years to do it, and now we have uh, six full ship charters, another fa fourth fastest growing travel company in the United States. Um, 
so it's been a bumpy ride, long ride. We've had some competitors come along around the way, um, like you know the Holy Ship and the Hard Cruises and some other cruises that didn't work. Um, so it's it's a challenging industry. There's no question. Very challenging. Extreme high um, barrier to entry. But when you've got you know two to three thousand people on a ship for 72 to 96 hours and all the people are in the same uh, lifestyle or genre of music, and they're all into the exact same thing. It creates a, uh, if you saw in the video, like a real family vibe and a just an energy around the ship that's really unlike anything I've experienced. You really build relationships. I think that's one of the differences is that you, yeah, the artists actually hang out. So there's artist fan interaction. You can run into, you know, Marcus Schultz at breakfast and, uh, I think that's one of the unique things too, is that it's the party doesn't stop. There's sunrise parties, uh, sunset, you know, nonstop, and then you've got the artist fan interaction. So it's really cool. And and Swami, tell us about your the, the the process of putting this event on. You did something quite spectacular out there in the middle of the desert. Tell us how this festival came about. You've been wanting to do it for a while, but how did it all? Well, Robohart uh, was our initial concept, and that resided in Burning Man in New York, and that that. It's, we're on our eighth year there, and, and we wanted to do something more than a party. We, um, and we realized we we're inspired by um, Carl Sagan's theories of ex ex um, existentialism and his study on the cosmos. And we wanted to interlay uh, the journey through space and time, that being our narrative, to re the return to happiness. And there's a quote that really inspired us by Herman Melville. I'm tormented with an everlasting itch for things remote. I love to sail the forbidden seas. So for us, we're yearning for something a little bit more. So the party itself being <clears throat> the catalyst and the, the core, but we wanted to add all the elements of, you know, tech talks, visionaries, food, wellness, <clears throat> that sort of thing that, that um, you know, because our demographic's slightly more mature than the, let's say, life in color. Um, you know, we're looking at 25 to, the, the average age is 25 to 50 range. So um, it's obviously a different approach. They're looking for d different things in terms of the entertainment and, Tell us about the, the people behind your festival. There was a, a lot of tech entrepreneurs and owners running around that site. Tell us, tell yeah. us who the people behind it. Well, it's, yeah, we're a little different than the typical electronic music company because we're, we're driven uh, primarily by entre tech entrepreneurs. So one of our founders, um, George Mueller, is an inventor of the color-changing LED. Um, another investor is the uh, uh, head of Google X, uh, Ash Hotella. Tom Cadis, he started Voxer. Um, so, you know, we've been blessed with a lot of visionaries that help, you know, fund the project and, and guide us uh, from a business standpoint. Are, they, are these guys in it to make a return or is it just a great playground for them? <laughs> a little bit of both, but uh, no, but in all seriousness, um, for us, it's, it, it's kind of like a, a we're, we're all brothers, it's kind of like a fraternity for lack of better words and we share a vision to create something better, so it's a, it's a, a means to an end to create a community. So further future is, is not actually just the event. Our goal is to create further future universe, which is take over an island and create our own kind of like seasteading, and create our own uh, uh, rules and ways of being. And you could go to that island and, uh, and collaborate and uh, share thoughts and ideas that, um, to make the world a better place. With Life in Color, it's one of those concepts. Is it a concept that you stick with for 10 years of your life? Or is it something that people enjoy maybe a few times and then they move on from that? Do you see a fast turnover of new people coming into it? Yeah, I mean, it's the, the way we kind of try to, you know, make life in color, we've embedded into, like, for example, the American culture is like, you know, when you go to college, you have to go to life in color. You know, it, it is definitely like a two, three year cycle. Um, we do have some fans that go for like five straight years. Um, but I think that's pretty much our range, and, and, and we understand that, and we're okay with that. I mean, there's always going to be somebody turning 17, 18, 19, 20. Um, and, yeah, so we, we, we focus on that, and, and we try to give them best, the best experience they can when they're in college, you know? How do you clean up the site after the event? It's actually not that bad at all. Um, it's, it, it looks a lot worse than what it really is. Um, when we go to indoor venues, we, we lay a carpet on the floor. Um, and since normally we do arenas and, you know, stadiums and major concert halls, there's not much cleanup to do because the ceilings are so high and the walls are not really close to the, to where the dance floor is. 
So really the main part of the cleanup is the floor. It's just laying down a carpet, and then we put some plastic and some pieces where you got to do, but it, it's not that bad. And then a cleanup crew comes after the show, four hours, and the place is spotless. I will say back in the days when we used to do the nightclubs, now that was a nightmare. I mean, we literally, I mean, I myself with my partners, we were climbing ladders, putting plastic everywhere. I mean, we would turn the nightclub into a giant trash bag, you know, <laughs> because the paint would hit everywhere. And, and yeah, I'm just glad we're not, we're not doing that anymore. Tell us about how you actually can't get to go to your event, because it was by invitation, is that right? Yeah, so we have an invitation-only policy that's via uh, a code um, method, so a code process. So basically, I, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's not to invoke exclusivity, because our, uh, the, tenant, the most important tenant of our event is curation, curation in every sense of the word, so even curating the people. You know, the reason why I, I think the event has such a great vibe is because it's, we've curated the people, and they're all like-minded, and they want to be around each other. But uh, the code process um, is simply you know, give us a reason why you think you're a further futurist. Go, go to our Facebook page and, and submit a reason why. I mean, and that's it, and we provide you a code, and then you enter the code and you get your ticket. So you, so you reply to every single, you scan no. every uh, invitation request? I don't personally, but that gentleman, Benjamin, does. <laughs> uh, uh, and, and Rob Scott, another partner. But um, yeah, we, look, we reply every single message and we look at every single message. But then, we, then again, we don't have 100,000 people coming to our party, it's only 2,500 people. How so much it's manageable. I mean, you're, you're a huge Burning Man advocates. It's been a big part of your life, you know. Yeah. How, how does it feel to kind of break away and do something like this? Is this kind of a homage to it or is it a very different approach? It's, it's diametrically opposed, but we're, like I said, we, we're very inspired by Burning Man. And, you know, Rob, Robert Hart was burned out of Burning Man, but Further Futures com is a very, very different concept. You know, Burning Man, um's philosophy is radical self-reliance. We're about making things very, very convenient for you. Um, if you go to Burning Man, it's 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 a lot of work and it's a lot of money. Whereas uh, for us, you know, you can be from the Vegas Strip to the site in 20 minutes, and you know, you don't really need to take a, a week-long shower afterwards. <laughs> So what, what, what have you guys next internationally got coming up? So Life in Colors in every car, the corner of the planet pretty much now, right? What's, what's next for you? Well, yeah, I mean, right now the, the major focus for, for our company is, is the international expansion. Um, this year our, our goal is to get to 40, 40 plus countries. Um, we're doing literally every country in Latin America right now. Um, all the Americas actually. And Europe is a big focus for us. So we actually had one of our uh, main event directors move to Europe. Um, he actually is here with me right now. Um, and we're going to be running Europe out of the Amsterdam office. And yeah, I mean, our goal is to expand at least into, you know, 10, 15 countries in Europe by next year. Um, this year in Asia, I believe we have six countries that are confirmed. And then hopefully we'll get close to 10. And it's actually, our f I'm uh, very excited about this. It's our first time doing... Uh, Ibiza. We're gonna do the whole, the whole summer session at Privilege on Wednesdays. That's gonna be really cool. And yeah, so I mean, it's it's we're literally going everywhere. South Africa just confirmed. Um, you know, just any, anywhere where you can put up a stage and throw paint on people and bring a DJ, we're there. You're here telling people about what you're doing. What what can people here engage with you on? How can people get involved in what you're doing? Apart from the obvious artistic level. For me. Um, yeah, we're all, I mean, Further Future is all about collaboration. Um, you know, th there's, th there's speakers, there's uh, uh, wellness gastronomy, there's um, a spa, so it's, it's, the event is, is, is made up of, of contributors. So, you know, hit me up on um, email swami at furtherfuture.com and yeah, I'm always open to collaborate. I've already started talking to these two gentlemen here about projects in Asia. Uh, this upcoming year, when I go back next week, we're launching Ultra in Macau. Um, and, and another potential Asian city. We've got year two for Wonderfruit, which is a lifestyle festival, um, partnered with Secret Productions in the UK for that. Um, US-wise, we've got um, for the future, uh, the second edition in January in uh, Southern Hemisphere. We're in discussions for that already, first week of January, so I'll look out for that. Um, feel free to ask Benjamin for a code. Uh, um, of course, Burning Man, and, and we've got Robohart Halloween, the eighth edition, and then uh, I also advise on uh, an amazing digital booking platform called Gigwell, and uh, you know, you, for all the uh, talent buyers and bookers out there, um, agents out there, uh, definitely check it out. Um, really amazing system. 
and a key contributor to AFEM as well for Asia. Yeah, thanks for inviting me to that. Yeah. Thank you. Sebastian, tell people here what they can do with you in the future. Um, I mean, I don't know. We're obviously in a mission to, you know, I, I want to make Life in Color, you know, the biggest global footprint in, in dance music as far as events. I think we're probably the only show uh, that has the capability, which we actually do this sometimes, it's pretty crazy. We'll have a Life in Color event on the same night in Brazil, in New York, and in Korea. Um, so, I mean, we can really do shows 365 days a year. So, I mean, obviously we're looking to expand everywhere in the world, which is why I'm here. I've, I've been meeting with promoters from all over the world um, and with managers and agents to also bring the artists. So, I mean, yeah, if you're interested in doing business, please feel free to reach out. Jason? Uh, just come up and talk to me or talk to uh, Ryan, who has our talent bookings, and, you know, we're, we're pretty open. Um, just come to us with a unique idea because it's not just another gig. It's, it's something very unique. You're going to get tons of marketing out of it from the artist's perspective, over 100 million impressions and things like that. And it's the only event where there's artist-fan interaction. So when your fans come, your fan base is, gonna, is definitely going to increase. And, and it's unique and it's different. So we're always looking for unique and different ideas versus just another gig. All right, well, fascinating discussion. And thank you all for the creativity that you're bringing to, to this world. We need it. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Cheers.